Hi guys, it's Rach and we're back. We're back, you and me. We are back for video three in our Start Today series. The intention behind this video series is to help you better understand how to use your Start Today journal or to help you better understand how to do this practice in any notebook you already have. I am very passionate about the idea that if we begin each day with focus and gratitude, incredible things can happen in our lives. And so I have said it since the very beginning of launching this brand back in 2019, that Start Today is not a product, it is a practice. It is the intention of getting really clear about who you want to be and where you want to go. In today's episode, in today's conversation, we're going to take a deep dive in how you break your big giant goal into small bite-sized pieces. There's that great old expression that says, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. When we think of where we wanna go and who we wanna be and we dream of these incredible, ambitious, kind of scary, very exciting dreams we have for our life, for our family, for our business. It's typically easier to get excited about what that is than it is to figure out how we're going to pull it off. If this is the first video in the series you are watching, please, 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 please do not start here. This is video three, so I would suggest you go back. Whether you are listening to this podcast or watching this on YouTube, you go back to episodes and you start from the beginning because the first episode lays foundation for what this process is like and in the last episode I take you through a guided visualization to help you figure out where it is you want to go who do you want to be 10 years from today how do you want to show up in the world who do you want to become this is a follow-up to that idea so if you don't have your big vision of where you're going maybe today's conversation won't make a ton of sense. So I would just suggest before we jump in that you start and take these in the proper order. All of that to say, this is also available in your Start Today journal. The first chapter of the Start Today journal is a this, like all the things. Everything I'm taking you through in these videos is written in the opening workbook chapter of your journal. The reason I'm doing them in video, in audio, in written form, in like if there's some other thing I haven't thought in podcast for like I'm doing all the things. The reason I'm doing that is that I've learned over time that people absorb and learn in different ways. I'm a visual learner. It really helps me to see things. If you are a visual learner too, these videos are for you. If you're someone who likes to absorb and learn through written word, you can go check out that very first chapter. If you like to listen to audio, you can go listen to this in the podcast. All the things, we're trying to get you this in all the ways. But let's start with this idea of 10 years in the future. We ended the last episode talking about who do you want to be 10 years from today? And it's worth saying, and I actually, I wrote this into the new version of the journal because I had experienced something in the last five years that made me adjust the way I wanted to talk about this practice. So when I first wrote the opening chapter for this work back in 20, I must have written it in 2018 because the first journal came out at the beginning of 2019. Back when I wrote that, the idea of like 10 years in the future got me so fired up. I was so excited about it. I was so pumped. I was like, let's go. And the 10 year idea came, and maybe you guys have like heard me talk about this so much, but I had gone to my first personal development conference and I heard Tony Robbins say a really iconic line of his, which is most people overestimate what they can accomplish in a year and they underestimate what they can accomplish in a decade. And when he said that, I remember sitting in that arena, this was like 2017 probably, I remember having this like, like my mind exploded because I thought, my gosh, that's me. I am the queen of getting to the beginning of a year and calling these crazy shots that are awesome and exciting, but if I'm being real, are completely impossible for me to pull off in a year. So I would lay out these massive goals for myself, call some crazy shot, and then if I wasn't at that goal in 10 months, 11 months, 12 months, by the time New Year's rolled around again, I would be so discouraged and I would look at that as evidence 
that I wasn't good enough. I wasn't strong enough. I was full of it. I had a lot of insecurity. Like I believed I had this part of me, like my inner, like my gut, right? I now know is my inner wisdom was just like, you've got this. You can do these things. You can figure this out. But then I had this other part of me that was like, total imposter syndrome. Like, who do you think you are? You don't have the connections. You don't know how you don't like just all of these things that I would hear in the back of my mind that would discourage me. And so when I didn't achieve the thing I set out to achieve, because I had given myself way too little time to do it, I just sort of would give up on myself again. And I talked about this in the last video that like, if you're a dreamer, I need you to hear me say this. If you're someone who has this idea, this goal, this dream on your heart, I believe it's there for a reason. I believe, you don't have to believe this, but I believe God puts those dreams in our heart. I believe God plants that seed inside of us and she believes that we are capable of more than we can see, right? The universe knows, like it's like, oh man, if you only realize how incredibly powerful you are, right? Like I just feel like we have this whole, I don't know, other realm, angels, guardian angels and, and ancestors and people are like, oh, come on girl, you have this. You are, you are so much more than you realize you are. I really believe that. But even more important than that knowledge, which I hope sort of pumps you up and gives you hope and makes you go like, okay, yeah, maybe I got this. Let's just get practical real quick. If you are a dreamer and you're constantly thinking up new big dreams, let's be real. You and me right now. That dream is not going to go away. It's not going to go away. It's going to haunt you. It's going to come back again and again and again, whether it's New Year's or a big birthday or you go through some big life event or you see someone else living out your dream and you're like, man, I really wanted to do that. I really wanted that thing. Remember five years ago when I thought about starting my own business, but I didn't do it. Remember when I was younger and I dreamed of being a teacher, but I went into law because my parents felt like that was the right choice for me. Like those dreams of our heart, they are gonna haunt us for the rest of our lives. And like, I know I can feel this in my bones. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, will you just comment if this resonates with you? If you are a dreamer, like I am a dreamer, can you just speak to that? Like, yep, this dream, even though I don't wanna admit it to myself, even though I'm scared to say it out loud, this dream has been following me around for a decade. So if that's real, if you can look at your past and know that the dream is not gonna go away, it's only gonna keep haunting you, which is only gonna make you feel like, all of these feelings, wishing that you had done it, just do the thing. Literally, it's the name of the brand. The name of the brand is Start Today. And Start Today means so many different things to so many people. I love it because it represents to me like morning routine, which is crucial in my life. This journal is built around morning routine, right? So like how you start today matters. But I also love the idea that so many of us beat ourselves up because we wish we would have done it already. We wish we hadn't given up. We wish we hadn't stayed down. We wish we would have just kept with it, right? So like, okay, you didn't do it yet? That's okay, start today. In fact, this, okay, my hair is gonna look. You know what, y'all, just, you don't even, just don't look up here, don't look at that hair. The back of the hat is um, based on this Chinese proverb that I really love that says, the best time to plant a tree was 100 years ago. The second best time is today. So like you can see, or I don't know, maybe the guys can zoom in for you. The back of the hat says the second best time is today because that's the idea. Start today. You didn't do it yesterday. Who cares? You didn't do it five years ago. Who cares? You didn't do it back in your 20s. Who cares? You didn't do it then. Great. Start today. Oh, you failed. Start today. Oh, you, you dropped off the wire. Okay, great. Start today. Plant your seed today. People get this so respectfully have the wrong perspective about things like this, about goals, about dreams. They're like, well, you know, I should have done it when I was younger. It's too late now. They're like, I'm in my 40s. I'm in my 50s. I'm in my 60s. This trips me out. And if you haven't thought of this perspective, can I just, can I just, let's just real quick. If you are 30 plus and you're telling yourself it's too late, I should have done it already. Dude, let's say, God willing, 
you are going to live to the average life expectancy of what's going on today. And this is like removing all the crazy things they're doing to help us live longer. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I'm going to go ahead and say 80, making that up. So let's say you're 30. Let's say you're 40. Let's say you're 50 or even 60. Like I, I remember a woman at a RISE conference one time came up. She was like, she raised her hand. She's like, you know, I'm 48. Like I just, I should have done it. It's too late for me. I'm like, are you freaking kidding? If you live normal life expectancy, as long as you've been alive right now, you're going to do that again. You're literally halfway through your life. You are halfway through. Let's say you got 40 more years. And by the way, if you don't have 40 more years, it won't matter. You'll be gone. It, you'll be, you know, you're, you're rolling around sitting on a cloud playing a harp. You, it won't even matter. Assuming in good faith, you're like, yeah, I think I got 40 more years ahead of me. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to watch daytime TV. You're just going to like roll on into. You are just getting started. You are just beginning. And not only are you just beginning, but you're just beginning with so much more than you could have at 20 years old. This is the other thing. You're like, I don't want to start at 40. I don't want to start at 50. I don't want to start at 60. Oh my God, why not? Why not? You have resources you didn't have when you were younger. You probably have financial resources you didn't have. You know people. You have wisdom. You have knowledge. You've been around the block. You're not so likely to get anxious or feel nervous about people not liking you if you post something on social media about your new bakery. Like There are so many things that you have going for you at your age that you didn't when you were 20. And by the way, let's just... Let me blow your mind in another direction. If you were supposed to have done the thing already, you would have. If you were supposed to, if, if the universe, if God, if your fate was that you were supposed to have done this thing already, you would have. I say this to my kids all the time, and they're still trying to wrap their minds around it. This is, this is my belief. Nothing that is for us will miss us. Nothing that is for us will miss us. So if it was meant to be yours at 22, it would have been yours at 22. And maybe the reason it's still on your heart at 52 is because now is the time. Now you have the time. Now you have the bandwidth. Now you have the capacity. Now you have whatever you're going to need for the next chapter of your life. And that is true whether you are in your 20s, whether you're listening to this in high school, whether you're older, empty nester, I don't care what's going on. If it's still on your heart, it's going to stay on your heart. And so you may as well just start working on it. Last episode, we did the guided visualization and we talked about this big vision. I hope that you come into this conversation today with a vision of where you want to go. But I do want to, I just realized I went off on a crazy tangent to land this point. I put something into the opening chapter of this book when I did the rewrite that I hadn't put in there back in 2018, which was this. If you are in a season of your life where 10 years in the future feels overwhelming, bring it in closer. If 10 years feels like too much, and I know what this feels like because I've gone through a lot of stuff in the last handful of years, and especially on the other side of really big grief, I don't know if it's just me. I don't know why this is, but like having walked through some pretty big grief in the last couple of years... There was something about like 10 years in the future really overwhelmed me. It just, it was too much for me. And so what I found was that I, as much as I had the sort of 10 year North Star goal, it actually helped me to do this process. And those seasons of feeling a bit overwhelmed was to bring that idea closer to where I was. So if 10 years in the future feels like too much, what is five years in the future? What is this time next year? The number is an arbitrary thing. Like it doesn't matter. It's whatever idea really gets you pumped up. But for today's purposes, I'm going to go with the 10-year vision because the original foundation of this work was something I called 10-10-1. It was 10 years turned into 10 dreams turned into one goal. And that's what I want to take you through in the next few classes, as it were. So this 10-year vision that you had, hopefully you got in the last episode, 
it's big right? I'll use an example from when I was younger and I was doing this with a 10-year goal. My 10-year goal was basically the life I'm living today, which is why I believe in this practice. But my 10-year goal was I could see myself as a successful author. I definitely didn't have the idea of a podcast yet because I didn't even know about podcasts at the time. But that was like this big idea I had was I'm a successful author. I make my living writing books. My kids are thriving. I'm financially secure. I'm living this beautiful life. I'm doing these things. I had all of these visions around what I could see in the future. And y'all, I didn't know any authors like I was describing. So a lot of the things I made up in my mind, they don't translate to the life I'm living today. The life I'm living today is a million times better than what I imagined because you can only imagine at the level that you're at. And every time you level up, the imagination expands. So I do this practice not so that I can get to the exact thing that I saw, but so that I can get going. I had this vision, 10 years in the future, I'm a really successful author. I do work that helps people. I put this content out into the world. I support my family with this work that I'm doing. And that was just sort of the whole idea. I'm going to try something, guys. And if you actually see the thing I try, it means that I thought it was good enough to work. But um, I just, this is going to be janky. I feel like the easiest way for me to explain this to you is to show you Again, this I'm a visual. And this is also in this opening chapter, so there's like a visual of this. But since you're watching this on video, I feel like the best I can explain it is with my whiteboard. But I don't have an easel, and I don't know how to set up a different shot, so I'm gonna see if I can, okay, let's just try this. Look, I know that this is easily one of the most ridiculous <laughs> ways of trying to show you guys something I've ever done. But I am convinced that like the production quality or the shot doesn't matter as much as uh, hopefully what I'm trying to get across. And if you are listening to this in podcast, this is one of those that you for sure want to go watch on YouTube because um, I think it'll make a lot more sense. But I like doing something that I call a dream storm. It's just a lame way of calling a brainstorm and attaching it to a dream. Here's the idea. We have this vision of where we want to go, but we need to break that down into pieces. We need to break it down into the steps that are necessary and the things that we need to achieve in order to make that dream become a reality. In a dream storm, or you maybe have heard me talk about an idea soup, I just want to get down as many ideas as I can possibly can. And I do this through, I don't know, what do we call it? Like a spider graph? I have no idea, but let me show you what it looks like when I do it in my own notebook. Well, I've done all this and uh, I'm not sure that you can actually even really see it that well, but I'm gonna just, I'm, we're just gonna go for it. We're gonna go for it and maybe graphic designers can make something better later. But I have put the words best-selling author, which was like my main vision, right? I put best-selling author and then I did a big circle around it. Now this is where the spider or the daisy or whatever you wanna call it, I'm gonna do as many ideas as I can possibly think of that were necessary for me that would go along with this vision. For those of you who have done my roadmap with me, so in in Girl Stop Apologizing, there's this whole thing about building a roadmap, we make an idea soup, we work backwards from the goal. This is not that. So if I was creating a roadmap to best-selling author, that would look like, you know, what are the things that I would need? I need a lit agent, I need a manuscript, I need, that's not what we're doing here. This is, what are the elements of this person, of this future best self, this future 10 year goal that I had for my life? What are all the things that I could see when I imagined her, what did that look like? So now I'm gonna make each one of those coming off of this vision in a line. Okay, now you can see my spider. (laughs) This is so janky. The editors are gonna kill me, but I kind of love that this is like a little bit 
awful, you guys, because this feels very on brand to me. Um, okay, so this is, let me try and get as close as I can to the camera. This is, I'm calling this a spider. This could also be a flower. I don't know what this is actually called. In the middle is best-selling author. And then I'm just making up a bunch of things that I also saw when I did this vision all those years ago. I saw my future self was healthy. I saw she was happy. She lived in a beautiful home. Her kids were thriving. She ran marathons. She had an engaged audience of readers who really cared about the work that she did. She traveled all over the world. And I, if I wasn't sitting here doing this with you, I could come up with 50 other things that I saw in that vision. There are so many elements to your future best self and like, it's your best self. It's not what your mama wants it to be. It's not what your husband wants it to be. It's not what your coworkers think. It's not what people on the internet think is rad. It is what do you see when you imagine your best future? So in fact, if you're doing this in real time with me, go ahead and pause this episode and maybe just brainstorm. Take like 20, 30 minutes and everything that you can think of, everything that you saw, maybe you'll even get ideas that you didn't see that feel compelling and exciting and make you think like, oh, I'd really love that. You want to circle the ones on this sheet that feel like this is what I would like to pursue. Within the journal, we focus on 10, 10 dreams that are part of the ultimate North Star goal. This one, I don't even think I have 10, but if I was doing it by myself, there might be 30. So in this instance, I wanna circle the ones that feel most compelling and important to me. It doesn't mean that some of these things couldn't come in later, but remember, this practice is about focus. It's about focusing on one thing at a time to get you closer to the ultimate goal. So if you tried to write down 30 different things every morning, it's gonna be too, it's too much for your brain to handle. So in this instance, let's go back in time and I'll tell you that Great mom was really important to me. Thriving was important to me. Being healthy was really important to me. Debt free was very important. I have a lot of childhood stuff around scarcity and money and whatever. So I wanted to live in a way where I didn't owe money. That was really important. Once you circle 10 different dreams, those become the 10 dreams that you write down every single day. Day. That's how you break the big vision into 10 bite-sized pieces. So here's how I want you to think of the 10 dreams. Imagine that your North Star, the vision, the 10 years in the future, imagine that that's a recipe for a cake, the most perfect cake, and you need the recipe to make that vision happen. The dreams are the ingredients of the recipe. If these 10 dreams came true, then that vision you have for your life would be made manifest. All right, some frequently asked questions that I get about this part of the practice. People are always wondering, okay, how do I know that this is the exact right thing to put down? You don't. And the best piece of advice I could give you is just get something down. When we are tapping into our intuition, which I hope that you're doing every single morning as part of this practice, that's why we start by raising our vibration through gratitude work. When we're tapping in to intuition, you can feel it when you write things down. I don't know how else to explain that, but if you start to write down 10 things that you just circled, there's an excitement in those things. There's, um, I would say a peace, but it, it doesn't feel calm. It feels joyful and also like, yes, that's right. Certain times I have put down things that I feel like I should want. Like I'm not really aware when I first started doing it. Like here's a very fantastic example. When I first started selling the Start Today journal, I would see so many moms, they would share their journal. And I love when you guys do that, please keep doing it. But they would share the things that they wrote down and they would often write these things especially as it pertained to motherhood, that were like so beautiful that I felt like I should also be writing down like really flowery, beautiful thoughts. There's a very specific one and I'm not gonna say it just in case she happens to be watching, but like I always thought it was so precious the way she wrote it down. And I remember 
feeling like I should be writing down something like that too. Like that when I thought about my motherhood, I should also want that thing. And so I would write it down, but it felt, I don't know, sort of like twitchy. It didn't settle in my bones. It didn't feel real. It didn't feel accurate to me. And I understand now it's because it's not. That's not the language that I use to talk about my relationship with my kids. That's not a phrase I would ever say. That's just not I'm just not that kind of mom. And my kids aren't those kind of kids. There's like this, I think it's Jen Hatmaker who used to say years ago, she'd say, she's like, some people have sweet kids and some people have spicy kids. And she's like, I have spicy kids. Same. So like my kids aren't sweet kids. And so I'm not like a sweet, like that's not, you know, I was comparing myself and I was shooting on myself. Like, oh, I should want this. I should be like that which obviously doesn't serve us in any way. But I feel like as you start to write things down, some of them are really gonna sing. They're gonna kind of make your bones sing and some are going to fall a bit flat. And if things fall flat or if things don't resonate for you in the right way or if things don't feel authentic, like you're writing down, I wanna be debt free, but when you write it down, it doesn't really feel authentic. It feels like what you should want. You really are wasting your energy trying to force yourself to say that something is your dream when it isn't. And you're wasting a lot of power that you have to actually get closer to goals if you would just be real, right? Like maybe your ultimate goal right now isn't to be debt-free. Maybe your ultimate goal right now, it's like to pay off your visa. Like it's just like one area that is very stressful to you or to make your car payment on time every month. Maybe it's something that's more real. If you lay out a dream, but your gut is like, that's not possible. That's not for you. That If there's cognitive dissonance between what you are writing down and what you actually want in life, you're not gonna see the results that you wanna see. You could certainly do it. I mean, plenty of us, have spent a lot of time in our life trying to be someone else, trying to fit in a mold, trying to play small, trying to fit into the box that everyone thinks that we should be in. Man, this is your private journal. No one's looking in this thing. This is your chance to say what it is you want to call your shot, to be yourself, to be authentic and true. What I always tell people is just write down 10 of anything and do that for a week, do that for a couple of weeks, and you'll notice which ones are really exciting to write down and which ones just don't sing for you in the right way. And I find that often what I'm writing down is like the intention, but I'm not writing it down in a way that's real for me. The second question I get a lot about this is, do you ever stop writing certain dreams as part of your daily practice? Absolutely. So when I first started doing this practice, I was laying out 10 dreams that were the best thing I could think of at that time. But as you grow and evolve, you will find that certain things don't make sense anymore, that you have changed into a different kind of person than would write down that dream, that you want to say things in a different way, or that it just doesn't resonate for you like it did. For instance, when I first started this practice, if I go back and look at those notebooks of mine, I find a lot of my dreams were about other people. So I remember I used to write down, I am an exceptional wife. I am an exceptional wife. I used to write that down all the time. And I wish I had written down more things about knowing myself and practicing self-care and just like loving myself because I think that or I often had a vision that I felt like was only possible if I first served everybody else. Like I almost felt like I wasn't allowed to be myself or to want something for myself unless everybody else was taken care of first. Glennon Doyle has a fantastic line about this in Untamed where she says, I'm gonna butcher it, but something like, in order for women to be successful, they must first be good. This idea that culture has that if a woman is successful or if a woman wants success in her life, she has to prove to everybody that she's good. She has to prove to everybody that she is a good person and she does things exactly right and she takes care of her kids and she takes care of her man and she does this and she does that. That is a double standard that doesn't exist for men. 
We don't ask that men show us how good of a husband they are, how good of a daddy they are, uh, what, you know, if they're a good member of their church congregation. Like, we don't ask for that in order for men to be successful. We're just like, oh, you're awesome. We celebrate your success. So that's an example of something that I didn't, I didn't know yet. I hadn't learned that yet. I hadn't grown as a woman enough yet to know that I could be on my list of priorities. And when I did start to realize that, then the way I wrote down dreams shifted not from who I was for other people, but who I was so that by being the best version of myself, I was giving the best version to others. Can you see the difference? I hope that that makes sense. Like the way I was looking at it was like, what matters most is how they think I'm showing up for them. And now what matters most is how I show up for me so that I can be the best version for them. That maybe sounds like semantics, but it's a really big learning for me. And so the way I wrote down that dream changed over time. And I hope to God that the way you write down things or even what you write down will change over time. The other instance where things fall off of my 10 dreams is when I realized that the the dream I was writing down was actually too small, is I will be writing down something and then, you know, a year goes by and I realize like, oh my gosh, I was thinking that maybe I'd get to the top of this mountain and I'm halfway up this one over here. So I actually didn't call a big enough shot and now this thing is completely obsolete so it can just come off the list. This is actually the beauty of doing this work is that when you're working on one goal, which is what I'm going to talk about in a second, when you're working on one goal, you will inadvertently achieve a lot of the others. But it starts by breaking that big vision into 10 pieces. So don't stress yourself out. Don't think that these have to be perfect. Don't think that these have to be exactly what is always going to be on your journal or always going to be in your notebook. Just get something down. So you have your North Star goal 10 years from now. Then you have your 10 dreams that will make that vision manifest. Now, the last part of the daily prompt, the last part of the daily work, the last part of your morning routine is what is the one goal that you're going to focus on first. So if you looked at your sheet or if you look at your 10 dreams in your notebook, what is the one goal? And if you're confused about this, I always recommend the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller. Talked to y'all about that about a million times at this point. But the one thing on that list, that if that dream came true, the other nine would be obsolete. Like the one thing on that list that is so big that you wouldn't even need anything else on the list. For me, Back in the day, this was New York Times bestseller. That was, of all my 10 dreams, I was like, if I was a New York Times bestseller, every other thing on this list wouldn't even matter because I would have achieved such a high state in my career that I know I wouldn't need to worry about money, that I know I wouldn't need to worry about this thing, that I know this would be accomplished because I'd gotten to that dream. When I ask at the bottom of the prompt page, what is the one goal you're going to achieve first? It is one of the dreams of your 10 that you want to work on first. How I personally pursue this is I write down my one goal first, and the journal has two little ribbon bookmarks, but if you're using your own notebook, maybe you do this on the same page just so it's easier for you, or maybe you get two bookmarks that you throw in your notebook. The first ribbon bookmark is on my daily prompt page, so that's my gratitude work, my 10 dreams, my one goal every day. Then... I use my second ribbon bookmark. I flip to my work pages. So the work pages are in the back of the journal. Honestly, I made this product for myself. I know some of you miss the old journal that was only prompt pages, but I wanted both my blank pages and my prompt pages in the same piece of equipment. So I hope that y'all are loving that like I love it. I flip to these blank pages and this is where I create my results list for the day. The results list, if you've never heard me talk about this, is different than a to-do list. A to-do list is a million miles long. If I ask you to make a to-do list of all the things you need to accomplish in life right now, 
it's got like a hundred things on it, right? And sometimes we'll even put things on the to-do list that we have already accomplished just so we can feel the satisfaction of crossing something off. A to-do list can have a bunch of busy work. A to-do list can have a bunch of things that do not matter. A results list are the things that you need to accomplish today that will move you closer to the ultimate goal. So remember our one thing we're gonna focus on. So I'm gonna start my results list with the things that I need, the results that I need by the end of the day in order to get closer. For example, if you are in a client-based business, let's say you have a small business, you need clients, and you know that on average, you've gotta do 20 cold calls to get one new potential client. So you know, 20 cold calls, one new potential client. Your to-do list might say 20 cold calls, right? Like I gotta do 20 cold calls every single day but you could do 20 cold calls and not actually get the result that you want, which is one potential new client. So the difference for me is I don't write down the to-do, I write down the result. The result that I need is one potential new client. So that means I'm not even questioning how many calls I might have to make. I'm just gonna do the work until I get that one. Do you see the difference? With this slight flip, you actually know what must be done to get you closer. And this, y'all, is how you actually gain traction. So many of you have sent DMs or emails, and I know you have this dream of writing your own book, right? You wanna write your story, your memoir, you have an idea for fiction, but you want your own book. Well, a to-do list would say, write. You know, I gotta, I gotta write some words today, so I'm working on the manuscript. But if you actually want traction to get closer to that goal, then the result that you need would be a thousand words, whatever your word count is. But you need the accomplishment that's actually pushing you forward, not the busy work. You wanna start your own business. Your to-do list could say, research the business model. And you could spend the next six hours scrolling Pinterest or talking to your friends or looking through a magazine or looking on Instagram under hashtag small business owner. And you can call that research, but I freaking promise you that's not getting you closer to actually making money at this small business that you want to start. That's why the results list is so freaking important. So that's what I use my work pages for. I use the work pages. I let, I mean, you, if you went through this, you would just see like so many results lists. You'd see me laying out my podcast. You'd see, um, I journal, I do morning pages. If you guys know Artist Way, I do morning pages in here. Um, if I'm struggling with something, I'll write it in here. Like my grocery list in here, I literally use this for everything. I know not everybody likes that. Some of you like having different products for different things, but I just want it to be easy. So, so I put it all in one place. That's how the one goal that we're gonna focus on gets translated into my daily work. Okay, one last thing I want to add to this conversation, which is just to take you through really quickly what it actually looks like for me to do the daily prompt pages and what I honestly hope it's like for you guys too. You'll have your own version of this, but I really believe that this is powerful at the start of a day. It's why it's one of the reasons the brand is called Start Today is this was really beneficial to me as part of my morning routine. And I open up daily prompt page. The first thing that I do is date it. Obviously, I like to keep track. And another thing I do that's fun, you don't have to do this, like this is just my thing, is I will put where I am. So if I'm traveling, I love to look back. I look back in my journals a lot, but I love to see like, oh, this was in Hawaii. This was in New York. Like, I just think it's fun to see where I've traveled to. Even when I was in COVID and I wasn't, we were in lockdown and I wasn't traveling at all. I would literally put like where I was in the house. So I'd be like on the sofa, at the dining room table, at my desk. I don't know, I'm a dork, but I write down the date and then some sort of piece of information about where I'm actually writing this stuff. The very top of the page says, today I'm grateful for. Here is how the gratitude practice works. You could very easily just write down five things. You'd be like, I'm grateful for my house. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my friends. And honestly, that's not gonna mean anything. Because if you're not having an emotional response, if you're not having a positive emotional response to your gratitude work, you are not doing it correctly. 
The whole point of doing gratitude work is to raise your vibration, is to change the emotions in your body, is to make you feel better. Why does that matter? Because you're about to write down the vision you have for your life. And if you are envisioning your future self while in a state of scarcity, while in a state of fear, while you're pissed off at your girlfriend, while you're frustrated with your kids, if that's the energy you're bringing to your dreams, it's no wonder that you're not passionate about working on your dreams. So a gratitude practice is always gonna make you feel better, is always gonna boost your mood, is always super good for your immune system, look it up, but at the very least, I assume that you're doing this work because you're trying to get somewhere. And if you're trying to get somewhere, whatever your goals and dreams are, set yourself up for success. And it doesn't take a ton of extra time. The way that I do this is, I like to think about something that has happened in the last 24 hours. I feel like if it's happened within the last 24 hours, it forces me to be present in my day. It forces me to be on the lookout for good things. And the most beautiful thing happens when you're on the lookout for good, you find it. So I'm constantly looking for good things. And then when I come back to the work the next morning, I know what to write down, right? I remember. So, I mean, I'll literally tell you what I wrote down today, guys. I've been really feeling super calm this week. And that's a big gift for me, being <laughs> like raising four kids over here by myself, like doing this thing, raising these babies and probably TMI, but I'm on my period, which is usually a pretty, um, my emotions tend to swing quite a bit because of hormones. And I just felt really good this week. And so I wrote that down. Yesterday is a Saturday. So on a Saturday is me and the kids, like it just tends to be the perfect recipe for me to feel stress. And I felt super calm and everyone was great. I didn't have a drink yesterday. Um, actually, I haven't been drinking much at all lately, uh, just because I wanted to see energy wise how I felt and this kind of goes to the same idea just being super honest that on a Saturday four kids by myself doing all the things I would love typically to have a vodka LaCroix at the end of the day that'd be my little treat so on a Saturday and on my period and all of this to have felt so calm that I didn't feel like I needed it was just awesome and to be totally honest I haven't actually figured out maybe some of you are like wait how how why how do you feel good what's I don't know I don't I've been doing a like a bunch of stuff so I don't know if it's just this beautiful combination of those things I'm gonna keep paying attention and if I figure out why I'm feeling so much better I will let you know but the kids yesterday um, my two youngest 11 and 7 just impromptu had a tea party together you know one of those moments where you're like nobody move or talk or breathe like please do not disturb this moment that I it's like I took a picture without them knowing and it's like locked in my mind them having this tea party which was so cute so I wrote that down when I did my list for the day I had already put dinner in the crock pot so I'm making salsa chicken I mean I made the salsa myself I didn't use the jar but that's neither here nor there but my oldest has been asking for chicken tacos and I woke up this morning and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do for dinner later. And honestly, I was like, oh, I know it's raining. Like I didn't want to, I, I just didn't want to deal. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do something in the crock pot so that later it's already done for me. Like that made me so happy. So I was really proud of myself. I was proud of present me for loving on future me. And the last thing I wrote down was chocolate cupcake because last night after dinner, hashtag hormones, I treated myself to my favorite chocolate cupcake, which is from Magnolia Bakery. Um, do you guys ever have the chocolate on chocolate? Woo! It is so perfect. As soon as I take one bite, I'm like, I want all of it. Nope. I just, oh my gosh, it was so good. So it made me really happy. Those were my bits of gratitude. But even as I'm saying it to you, it's making me feel happy. It's raising my vibe, like it's raising my energy. I feel really good. So I am constantly paying attention to, did my energy change? Did my state change in doing that gratitude work? If you're not feeling the energy shift when you're writing things down, slow down, close your eyes, and put yourself back in that moment. Go back into the moment that you're feeling grateful for and see it like a movie. Like go back in the moment, you could close your eyes, you could settle, put your hands on your heart, 
take some deep breaths and you can go back to that moment. I can go back to that moment watching my kids have a tea party. I can go back to that moment sitting around after dinner last night when I surprised everybody because they didn't know that I got cupcakes and everyone was so pumped. I can go back to that moment when I was feeling proud of myself as a mom because I got dinner in advance for later today. Now, maybe some of the things I'm saying don't resonate with you. Maybe you're like, Rach, I'm 19. I don't have kids. Great. So what has happened to you in the last, you know, you went and got your matcha. I made that up. I know not 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 all 19-year-olds like a matcha latte. But as far as Instagram is telling me, it seems like that's a big thing for you guys. But what's your version of that? You got to see your bestie. You talked to your grandma yesterday. You saw a puppy. Oh my gosh, the amount of times that small animals go on my daily gratitude list. The point is that you are grounding yourself in abundance before you start to dream about what is possible. So I do my gratitude work. I write down those five things. And then I write down my dreams. And sometimes as I'm writing those dreams, I'll change the wording to see if it it makes it even more exciting. Here's a fantastic example. I think when it started, it was like, my family is healthy and happy. My family is healthy and happy. That's the number one thing on my list. And the interesting thing about that is that there's no like end goal for that. I'll never cross that finish line and be like, all right, check. My family's healthy and happy. I can stop working on this thing. This is an ongoing for the rest of my life. This is something that I want to be focused on and mindful of. But healthy and happy, just like it wasn't really like landing with me. Remember I said I want something to sort of sing in my bones. It wasn't doing that. So I changed it to my family is thriving. And the word thriving is all in caps. And that makes me go like, hell yeah. And that makes me think every single member of my family is thriving. So that, I don't know, it super works for me, but that was the change of one word or two words into one word that just made it feel better. Here's another one. I have an incredible team and the word incredible is all in caps. That was about some hires that I was making in the business. That was about some collaboration partners that I was changing to. And I tried out a bunch of different words, but like incredible, all in caps. I'm like, yeah, I want the kind of team around me that I'm like, these people are badass. They are killing it. They are incredible. So it'll change depending on what you are working on and how you want to write it. But just know that that's something I play with to see if I can get like a little bit more oomph when I'm writing it down. I do my gratitude work. I do my 10 dreams. I do my one goal. Then I immediately flip to the work pages in the back of the journal. I write my results list for the day. And then I go get ready for the day. So I do this practice early in the morning before the kids are up. And then... I'll go, okay, got to wake the babies up for school, got to get them going, lunches, breakfast. I'll get them off to school. I'll do my workout. I'll go get in the shower. Like I'll do my whole thing. But I have set up the day so that when I actually sit down in the office here in the studio and I'm going to do work, I know exactly what needs to be accomplished. And I like it because the whole time I'm going through stuff or taking a shower, putting my makeup on, the things that I need to do are getting done. I just find this so efficient and it's really been super helpful in my life. It is not magic. It is not some special thing. It is like, it's just staying focused. But this particular habit has really, really helped me. I hope it will help you guys. If you like this episode, whether it's an audio or you're watching it on YouTube, would you please consider sharing it with someone that you think might dig it too? I will be back soon with more conversation. But as always, I love you and I'm rooting for you.